Amen. Well, good morning, Greater Mount Zion. Amen. Good morning, Greater Mount Zion. Friends and any new visitors uh, that we may have who are joining us for our online worship service, uh, we welcome all of you this morning on this fourth Sunday in the month of May. Amen. Amen. And just in case we have some new viewers who are joining us for our online worship service, if you would shoot up some hearts or some praise hands uh, to let us know that you are with us. And we ask you to do that because we welcome you and we are uh, happy that you have decided to join us uh, online for worship. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, since that's what we are gathered to do, we're going to get ready to invoke God's presence wherever you may be as we get ready to worship him. So if you don't mind, please bow your heads. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for another day to worship you. God, we thank you for bringing us through this past week. And we thank you, Father, for watching over us and taking care of us, Lord. And now, Lord, as we get ready to worship you, we pray right now and ask that you will make your presence felt wherever we may be. Let us know that you're with us, God. And then bless us, Lord. And help us worship you with all of our being because you deserve it. And so Father, we pray that everything that's said and done in this worship service will be done to your name's glory. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, as we get ready to worship our God and King, let's give him praise. Amen. Amen. Give God praise right now because he deserves it. Amen.
Amen. My brothers and my sisters, it is prayer time now here at Greater Mount Zion. And as we get ready to go to the Lord in prayer, I do want to ask that you would keep our sick and our shut in lifted up in prayer. Continue to pray for all those who we know are battling or dealing with uh, some type of health issue. It may be you. And so you need to pray for yourself. Amen. Amen. I want to ask that you will continue to pray for Sister McIntosh. Amen. Continue to pray for Sister Tina Leonard and Sister Felicia Jones and uh, many others we know who are struggling with health issues. I do want you to pray for, uh, continue to pray for uh, Brother Lawrence Winfrey. Amen. We praise God that everything is well with him right now, but pray for his mother. Amen. And pray for his aunt and pray for his sister. Amen. Uh, keep them lifted up in prayer. Uh, continue to pray for families uh, who are dealing with the loss of loved ones. Uh, many uh, are dealing with the fact that they've lost their loved one uh, to some senseless violence that has taken place uh, lately on our streets. And so we just ask you to pray for them. Amen. Pray God strength and comfort uh, for them and in their lives. Uh, then continue to pray for our church as we get ready to gather to meet concerning uh, returning back to the house of the Lord here at Greater Mount Zion in July. And so pray for our meeting that will take place the second Saturday uh, in June at 12 noon. Pray for that. Pray as we're leading up to that. Amen. That it will be a su successful meeting uh, and that uh, we will follow um, not only uh, the CDC and the science, but we'll follow the Lord. Amen. So pray for that. Pray for our city here in Milwaukee. Uh, continue to pray that God would touch these streets. Amen. And in some of the mess we see going on, pray for our country. Uh, you all know what's going on. If you've been listening to the news or reading the news, you know everything that is going on. So our country needs prayer. Most of all, our country needs forgiveness from the Lord. Amen. Amen. So pray for our country. Then pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for your families. Amen. Pray for our young people, our children. Uh, some of them have been struggling with online learning um, and they're ready to get back into the schools, uh, but summer is coming, amen, and there will be some who may be in summer school, some who may not, but we need to pray for our young people, amen, amen, amen. So if you don't mind, please bow your head. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. And God, as we come to you, Father, we first want to ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins and that you would please have mercy on us. We pray, Father, that you would do that and wipe the slate clean in our lives that you may hear us, God. Because we understand your word lets us know that if we harbor sin in our heart, that you will not hear from us. And God, we need you to hear our prayers today. So, Father, as we come to you, we pray for our sick and our shut-in. We ask you, God, to continue to be with them, Lord. We pray for all right now, God, who are dealing either with some physical pain emotional pain or some health issue they may have. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would touch their bodies, Father. And we pray right now that you would touch uh, Sister Carolyn McIntosh, you would touch Sister Tina Leonard, Sister Felicia Jones. We pray, God, that you would touch the mother of Brother Lawrence Winfrey and his aunt and his sister, God. 
Touch all of those right now, Father, who need it and who need a healing in their lives. But God, we know because you're so powerful and that you're able, we're asking you to work a miracle in their lives, God, and to remove whatever it is, God, whatever health issue they have, we ask that you remove it right now. And then, God, we pray for families who are going through their time of bereavement. They've lost a loved one, God. Some have been lost to violence, God. And we just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would be with those families, that you would strengthen them, and that you would comfort them right now. Then, God, we pray for our church here at Greater Mount Zion, we're asking you, Father, to continue to bless us in this place and continue to lead us in guidance. We pray for our meeting that will take place on the second Saturday in June. And we're asking you, Father, to show up in this place before we even arrive, that the meeting will go well as we discuss returning to this place to worship you. We pray, God, that you will continue to lead us in guidance as we seek to come back into this place. And then, Father, we pray for this city we call Milwaukee, and for cities all across this country. But there's so much going on, Father, so much killing and so much evil that is taking place. And, Father, we know that you are able, God, to remove it. And so we're coming to you, Father, Asking in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would exercise uh, your power, God, in this land and remove the evil that is taking place. Touch hearts and minds of those who want to commit evil, God. Touch them right now. Lord, whether it's in the White House, God, or, or Father, or whether it's in our own house, we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to touch this land because we need it, God. With everything that's going on, we need a touch from you, Lord. So in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, go to work removing the evil that is taking place. But then, Father, we pray for all those who are watching right now. And we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you would bless them, Lord, with whatever it is they are in need. Show up in their situation, God. Do what it is that you do best. And then, Father, we also want to thank you for being so good and so kind to us. Thank you, Lord, that you've been watching over us and even been blessing us even while we've been going through a pandemic. Thank you, Lord, for just being so good to us and for loving us so much. And then thank you, Father, for sustaining us and keeping us as a church family here at Greater Mount Zion. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you because we know we didn't do it ourselves. And we also understand, God, that if you had not blessed us, if you had not been with us, Lord, we never would have made it. But we understand because we're still here. And we're still doing as well as we are. We understand, God, that it is because of you. And so we thank you, God, for all you've been doing for us. And we praise you right now because we know you're not done with us, God. And so, Father, we thank you. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, we're going to get ready to receive our announcements. And then after our announcements, amen, we will be able uh, to worship God through our giving, amen, amen. I do pray and hope that each time you show up for worship, uh, that you come ready to worship God through your giving, amen. And here at Greater Mount Zion, we do that uh, through tithes and offerings, amen. Amen. We're not going to badger anyone or anything like that. We're just going to do what God would have us to do according to his word. And that is to encourage you to be obedient to God and his word by giving to him in the form of a tithe and an offering. Amen. Amen. So before we have our announcements, let us pray uh, 
for the offering. So will you please bow your head. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for all that's taken place thus far in this worship service. And Father, we pray right now that you would touch every heart and every mind. Encourage us, Father, to be obedient to you through our giving. You've asked us to give to you a tithe and an offering, God. And out of obedience to you and to your word, God. But we want to do that. And then, God, we also want to thank you in advance for all that will be received here at Greater Mount Zion. And we just ask, Father, that you would continue to encourage us and use us and use what is given, Lord, for the building of your kingdom and the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray that you will bless those who give to you out of obedience to you. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, let's get ready to receive our announcements, and then after the announcements, you'll have the opportunity to worship God through your giving. And by the way, for any new viewers, you can do that by clicking the Donate tab at the top of the screen. You can click the hand that will come up that says, I want to give. Both of those will take you to the Givelify app, which is the electronic giving app we use here at Greater Mount Zion. Uh, you can also mail in your offering if you so wish. Uh, the address will come up during the offertory period. Amen? Amen. Deacon Darren here, I'd like to take a moment to cut into our services to make this announcement. Coming up in June will be our pastor and family's ninth year church anniversary here at Greater Mount Zion. We would like for everyone to be a part of this celebration. Because of the COVID restrictions right now, we are not allowed to come into the sanctuary and be a part and have a fellowship with our pastor and family. So one way that we all can participate is by donating and showing love to our pastor. There are several ways that we can do this. One, we can give by give a fly. And if you are gonna give through give a fly, our online uh, services, we ask that you note on the memo section that this is for our pastor's anniversary. Or you can send a check. If you send a check, we ask that you write the check out to Greater Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church so that we will collect all checks and then present our pastor with one lump sum check. And our third option is for you is that you can call Deacon John Zizek and he'll be more than happy to come and collect your donation anywhere in the Milwaukee metro area. We want to make these things convenient for you so that you can be a part of our pastor and family's celebration. We look forward to coming back into the sanctuary very soon. We look forward to all fellowshipping together again. And we just look forward to seeing your face once again as a church family. Once again, let's let our pastor and his family have a great celebration. Let them have, let them know that we love and care about them. And we can do this with your help. Please donate to our pastor and his family's celebration. Thank you, God bless. <laughs>
Everybody put your hands together like this. That's it. We're gonna have good old church. Can I hear a little guitar? A little guitar, please. Come on. A little bass, please.
Amen. Amen. Well, my friends, it is now time that we hear word from the Lord. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me, if you will, uh, to the gospel according to John. John chapter 6, beginning at verse 66 and ending at verse 71. John chapter 6, beginning at verse 66 and ending at verse 71. For any of our new viewers, um, if you notice, there is a Bible tab. Uh, down there on the screen, you can click that and you can use whatever version of the Bible you would like. Uh, but go with me to John chapter 6, beginning at verse 66 and ending at verse 71. Amen. This is what you will find there. From that moment, Many of his disciples turned back and no longer accompanied him. Therefore, Jesus said to the twelve, You don't want to go away too, do you? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who will we go to? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus replied to them, Didn't I choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is the devil. He was referring to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, one of the twelve, because he was going to betray him. Amen. Verses 68 and 69 claim our attention. There it says, Simon Peter answered, Lord, who will we go to? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Amen. Well, beloved, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for this preaching moment that has arrived. And we ask God that you would bless us by preaching to our hearts and to our mind, helping us to understand your word, God, and then helping us to accept it and apply it to our lives. Pray, God, that you would use me in a mighty way to proclaim your word with power and conviction. Touch my mind, my heart, and my tongue so that your word may go forth, God, and not come back void as you said it would. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Well, beloved, for a few moments this morning, I want to share with you from this thought. Understanding Jesus is all you need. Amen. Understanding Jesus is all you need. Amen. A few years ago, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago, uh, I preached a sermon from a different text titled, Jesus is All We Need. And in that sermon, the Lord led me to share that Jesus is all we need because Jesus is the only one who really knows all about our struggles. That Jesus is the only one who's able to help us with our struggles, and that Jesus is the only one who can bring an end to our struggles. Jesus is all we need. Amen. 
And beloved, the difference between the sermon back then and the one the Lord has placed on my heart for today lies in the word understanding. In the first sermon, all we needed, who we as Jesus Christ, was presented. And the case for why Jesus is all we need was argued. But in today's sermon, what is being asked is, do you understand what has been presented before is all you need? Do you understand Jesus is all you need? You see, the word understand as it relates to our text, means to perceive the significance of something. And so, beloved, what would we share today has to do with whether or not we perceive the significance of Jesus being all we need. Are you with me? Well, there are a lot of people in the world who do not perceive this. There are many people who do not see a need for Jesus. They believe they are good and better off without Jesus. They don't believe in him and they don't want anything to do with him nor anybody who has a relationship with him. They do not perceive the significance of Jesus. Amen. And then, beloved, there are many believers who perceive Jesus as being significant for their salvation, but insignificant in other areas of their lives. He's perceived as being significant to save their souls, but not to heal them. He's perceived as significant to deliver them from the pit of hell, but not to deliver them from their addiction, vice, or whatever monkey is on their back. He's perceived as significant to save them for all eternity, but not to save them from their enemies. He's perceived as significant in one area and insignificant in others. So, beloved, today, I don't want to argue the fact that Jesus is all we need. But I want us to understand Jesus is all we need. Amen. And so, as we look at our text, we see a great turning away from Jesus. Uh, there were some people following Jesus who did not perceive the significance of Jesus. Are you with me? Uh, the crowd who experienced the miracle of the fish and loaves couldn't handle Jesus' teaching about him being the bread of life. In verse 51 of this chapter, where Jesus says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. And then in verses 53 through 55, Jesus said, I assure you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day because my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink, amen. Well, after hearing these words from Jesus, many who were following him decided his words were too hard for them. So they started peeling off, amen. They started fading back. The crowd dropped off. Well, my brothers and my sisters, that's how it is with people who follow Jesus only for what they can get. They are fans of Jesus and not followers of Jesus. They follow him while things are good. 
But when the word of God is preached or taught that calls them to commitment and responsibility, they drift away from Jesus. Well, as they were slowly backing away from Jesus, Jesus turned to the 12 who he personally called to follow him and asked them in verse 67, you don't want to go away too, do you? These words that flowed from Jesus' lips were very emphatical or powerful. You, you don't want to go away too, do you? In other words, will you abandon me also? You whom I have distinguished with innumerable marks of my affection, you whom I have chosen out of the world to be my companions, you whom I have revealed the secrets of the eternal world, you who have been witnesses of all my miracles, will you go away? Well, beloved, let me ask you a question this morning, if you don't mind. Will you go away from Jesus when things get hard, when his word calls you to responsibility and commitment? Will you, who he saved from the pit of hell, will you, whose body he has healed, will you, who he has provided for, will you, who he has given some work to, will you, who have experienced his blessings, will you, who are eternally saved, will you leave him too? When things get hard and when the hard sayings of Jesus are preached and taught, will you walk away from Jesus? Now, beloved, Keep in mind when Jesus asked the disciples if they wanted to leave him, he was not encouraging them to leave him. However, he was giving them the opportunity to leave him if they, if they so wish. What this lets us know is Jesus will not force us to follow him. When it comes to following Jesus, it must be of your own volition. You must desire to follow Jesus. Amen. Well, in response to Jesus' question, Peter responded in a way that lets us know him and the other disciples understood that Jesus was all they needed. They perceived the significance of having Jesus in their lives. And my friends, when you get to the point of understanding that Jesus is all you need as the, as the disciples did, then beloved, there are three things that happen to get you to that point. And the first thing that happens is you understand there's no one else or nowhere else you can turn to. Have I got a witness? In verse 68 of our text, Simon Peter answered on behalf of the twelve. And with his usual or normal zeal and readiness, Peter said in the eighth clause of this verse, Lord, who will we go to? Where shall we find a more gracious master? Where, where shall we find a more powerful redeemer? Where shall we find a more suitable savior? Who Will we go to? Now, beloved, please know it's not like Peter and the rest of the, of the disciples were not staggered or stunned by what Jesus said in verses 51 through 55. Don't think for a minute they were not contemplating following the rest of the crowd. Yes, it crossed their mind just like some of us. Some of us, when we hear or study the hard sayings of Jesus or some unwelcoming event happen in our lives, the initial impact will cause us to think or even do something we will regret later. And beloved, believe me, 
Many of those who abandoned Jesus in our text regretted abandoning him. But the initial impact causes us to respond in a way that symbolizes turning away from Jesus. Some of us stopped coming to church. Some of us put our Bibles down. Some of us closed our prayer lives. Some of us put a lock on our purses and our pocketbooks. Some of us put our hands back and stop serving Jesus. All because we've come across the hard sayings of Jesus that calls us to the carpet of commitment and responsibility and service to him. When we find out that serving Jesus is not always a bed of ease, we begin to want to back away. We see it all the time. People come join the church. They keep coming to worship. They start coming to Sunday school. They start coming to Bible study. They start learning the word of God. And many of them start learning what we call the hard sayings of Jesus. Things like forgive those, amen, who despitefully misuse you. Do not seek your own revenge because God says vengeance is mine. Amen. Love those who despitefully misuse you. Forgive those who wrong you. Those are some hard sayings for us from Jesus. Many times, folks come to the church or join the church and start hearing these hard sayings, they start peeling back. Then, beloved, just like Peter and the disciples in our text, when you understand Jesus is all you need, all of a sudden, a light will come on in your head and in your heart. You will awaken to the fact that where you are is the best place to be. Being with Jesus is better than walking away with the crowd. Amen. In other words, you will say just like Peter, Lord, who will we go to? Who will we go to that has the power to help us? Who will we go to that can help us in our time of need? Who will we go to that can make a way out of no way for us? Who will we go to that can love us like you, Jesus? Who will we go to that can heal our wounded heart? Lord, who will we go to? Brothers and sisters, it's not like there was nowhere else for the disciples to go. They could have went to the lifeless formalism and wretched traditions of the elders. They could have went to the many gods, small g, and many lords of the heathens around them. They could have even turned to blank or empty belief. But instead of turning to any of those things, they decided it was best to stay with Jesus because there was no one else they could turn to. Just like the disciples, there are others you can go to. There are other things and persons you can go to. Uh, there are other empty religions you can turn to. You can go to your friends. You can go to your family. You can go to your co-workers. You can go to your finances. You can go to your job. You can even go to yourself. But beloved, you will find those people and those things, even you, cannot do for you what Jesus can. They can't provide the real help you need. They can't answer your prayers. They can't heal your body. They can't watch over you and your family. They can't do for you what Jesus can. When you understand there's no one else or nowhere else you can turn to, then do you begin to understand Jesus is all you need. 
the second thing we see in the text that will get you to the point of understanding Jesus is all you need and that is you understand Jesus has what you need. Charles Spurgeon said, I have a great need for Christ and I have a great Christ for my need. Amen. Look at verse 68 again. Peter says, Lord, who will we go to? You have the words of eternal life. In other words, no one can teach the doctrine of salvation but you and no one can confer or bestow the gift of eternal life but you. There was nowhere they could go and no one they could find who could speak the words of everlasting life. Peter and the eleven understood Jesus had what they needed. They understood no one else had what they needed. Jesus was the only one who had it. He had the words of eternal life. Listen at this. In John chapter 17 and verse 3, Jesus says, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. In John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. In John chapter 6, verses 47 and 48, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Have I got a witness? Jesus had what they needed. And guess what, beloved? Jesus has what you need. You, you, you see, a need is necessary for a circumstance. Amen. Watch this. You see, humanity has a circumstance that requires a need. Uh, uh, our circumstance was, and for some, is the need to be forgiven of our sin. And my friends, Jesus has what you need. He has what is necessary for humanity to be forgiven and to receive eternal life. To make it plain, he's who you need. He not only has what you need, he's the one you need. In other words, you need Jesus. Have I got a witness? Now, I know many of you think that your need is this or that your need is that. You need more money. You need a better job. You need a better relationship. You need a better house. You need a better car. You need better clothes. But beloved, let me help you this morning because your deepest need, your most extreme need is what Jesus has and that is the words of eternal life. When you begin to understand Jesus is all you need, you understand that he is who you need and that he has what you need. He has eternal life. He has saving power. He has delivering power. He has sustaining power. He has the words of eternal life because he is eternal life. Jesus has what you need. Finally, beloved, you will understand Jesus is all you need. When you finally understand who Jesus is. Watch this. 
In verse 69, Peter says something that let us know they finally understand who Jesus is. There he says, we have come. Pause. We, we, we have come. You wasn't at that point before. You, you wasn't at that state in your thinking and your faith before. He says, we have come. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. You see, some of us have to finally come to that point. We've been on this Christian journey for a long time, but we have not finally come to the point of believing and knowing who Jesus really is. Peter and the disciples. Peter says, we have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Oh, my friends, these words from Peter imply that him and the other disciples had reached a point of knowing who Jesus was, although they had more to learn, amen. But, 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 but they knew what they knew about Jesus. From what they seen him do, they knew what they knew. From the words he said, they knew what they knew. From the miracles he performed, they knew what they knew. That's why Peter said, we have come to believe and know. And beloved, when Peter says, we have come to believe and know, Peter is basically saying, Jesus, we have reached a point in our faith and understanding about you, and we have concluded, you are the Holy One of God. Jesus, you are infinitely and absolutely holy and perfectly divine. You are transcendent and majestic. We are sure you are the Christ. You are the promised one of God. We have seen the evidence and we have come to believe and know that you are the holy one of God. Well, my brothers and my sisters, have you finally reached the point of understanding who Jesus is? Have you come to believe and know that Jesus is the Holy One of God? Have you come to believe and know that He is the one God promised long ago? Have you come to believe and know that Jesus is the one, the only one, whereby men, women, boys, and girls can be saved? Well, just in case you haven't reached that point, when it comes to who Jesus is, let me help you this morning. He's the one who provides for you. He's the one who watches over you. He's the one who healed you when you were sick. He's the one who put an end to your troubles. He's the one who brought you through, brought you out, and brought you over. He's the one who saved your soul. He's the one who died for you. He's the one who was raised on the third day. He's the one who will be coming back for you. Now, if you don't mind, I need to ask you a question. After hearing all of that, have you finally come to an understanding that Jesus is all you need? Have you come to an understanding of who Jesus is? That he's the only one that you need. Do you know who he is? Do you understand who he is? Well, if you do, then you ought to know he's all you need. Because now you ought to understand there is no other. There's nowhere else and no one else you can turn to. 
You ought to understand that Jesus is the only one who has what you need. And you ought to understand who Jesus is. You ought to understand that he is the one who died for you. You ought to understand he is the one who got up for you. You ought to understand he is the one who's coming back for you. And beloved, I want to share this with you. If you don't understand, I'm here to let you know that I understand. Because I've come to know and believe who Jesus is. I know it because he saved my soul. I know and understand because he made me whole. I know and understand because he provides for me. I know and understand because Jesus loves me. I know and understand because Jesus cares for me. I understand that Jesus is all I need. And knowing that I've got Jesus, I'm here to tell you, I've got all I need. Amen. Amen. Understand, Jesus is all you need. There's no one else, nowhere else you can go. Lord, who will we go to? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know you are the Holy One of God. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise, beloved. Amen. Well, my friends, we want to take this time right now to extend Jesus Christ. There may be someone who's been uh, viewing our online worship service. You don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have not come to that understanding yet. But we want to extend Christ to you today. We want to help you to know and understand that you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You, you need him because there's nowhere else or to no one else you can go who is able to save your soul. Jesus did that when he died on the cross and when God raised him from the grave. Amen. And I want to let you know that he is coming again. But he did that. Then we want to help you understand that he has what you need. He has eternal life. And he can give that to you if you receive him as your Lord and Savior. And then we want to help you understand who he is. He's the one who's having mercy on you right now. The fact that you are still alive and the blood is still running warm in your veins and you have not died and moved on to everlasting punishment and separation from God. In other words, you have not died and gone to hell yet. The simple fact that you're still alive, he's having mercy on you. He's the one who's doing that. And so, right now you are able, while you're still alive, to receive him as your Lord and Savior. So you don't have to worry about going to hell. By receiving Jesus Christ, you understand that he's the only one. There's no one else for you to turn to. You understand that he has what you need. And you know you'll come and find out you've been missing out on what you've been needing when you finally give your life to Jesus Christ. You will receive what you need, your deepest need, which is eternal life. Amen? Amen. And so if you want to do that, the hand will come up. I want to commit my life to Christ. If you click that, it will take you to our website where you can scroll down. Uh, you will see the plan of salvation and you'll be able to send us a message about the decision you've just made. Or maybe you're watching. You know Christ. You understand that he's who you need. Amen? You understand Jesus is all you 
But you don't have a church home. You don't have a place to worship and serve him. I want to let you know that Greater Mount Zion can be that place for you. That's all you got to do. Uh, there's a, a button, that, a hand that will come up uh, that you want to uh, connect with our church or become a part of our church family here at Greater Mount Zion. We ask you to click that. That will take you to our website where you can uh, fill out a form and send it to us about the decision you just made. Or if you want, either one of you, you can let us know in the chat area. Amen. I hope you're not ashamed to do that. Or you can click the request prayer button. And that will bring you into the host area where I am and we can have a, deci a discussion about the decision you just made. For those of us who know Christ, we're saved, we're part of the church family. Uh, let us bow our heads as we get ready to pray and pray that God will touch someone this morning and lead them into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your word, for Holy Spirit. And God, we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ. Pray right now, God, that you would touch somebody's heart. Touch their minds and move them to make a decision for Jesus Christ or to become a part of our church family here at the Greater Mount Zion. Father, we ask you to do that. Lead them, God, to an understanding that Jesus is all they need. For it is in Christ's name that we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Give God praise, amen, for his word, for Holy Spirit, for most and most of all, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I do want to thank all of you who are part of our service this morning. Please know uh, that uh, the service will replay at 1145 and that it replays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday. Amen. Amen. So thank you all so much. I do hope some of you will start attending our prayer meeting We've been having a great prayer meeting. We've been praying for all of you, amen, as the people of God and as a local body of believers of Greater Mount Zion. We ought to all be in prayer together now because we're going to be meeting and discussing, gathering back into this place to worship our God and our King, amen. I know some of you have gotten comfortable being at home and feeling safe at home, I understand that, but things are getting better. And when the Lord allows, we ought to come back into the house of God to worship him. Amen, amen. So I do hope you plan on being at the meeting on the second Saturday in June at 12 noon. But I do, I pray that some of you who have not been a part of our prayer meeting, that you will join us. And then I pray that you will be a part of our Bible study on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And then that you'll be part of our Sunday school, amen. 10 a.m. Saturday mornings is our Sunday school time. And so if you're getting the Zoom link and you haven't been in Sunday school this year, I pray that you would uh, start showing up uh, for, for Sunday school, amen. Amen. Well, listen, love it. Thank you all so much. I do pray uh, that you have a wonderful day. Continue to pray for those who we've asked you to pray for, who are having health issues. They need your prayers. Amen. Amen. Well, let us uh, close our worship service with the benediction. Will you please bow your head? Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you for your word today. God, we thank you for Jesus, who is the only one and who's all we need. We thank you for him dying for us and for you raising him from the grave. We thank you that he has saved us, that he is still active in our lives, taking care of us. Now, May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. Let the people of God say, Amen. 
Amen. Beloved, we love you. Look forward uh, to seeing you this week in prayer meeting or Bible study or Sunday school. Have a great day. Forgive us.